Joining us now, an old friend of mine, and gosh, I've known him for, I don't know how long I've known Governor Mike Pence, but <laughs> it's definitely decades, and he joins us now. Governor, how are you, sir? Great to talk to you. Oh, great. Great to talk to you, Laura. Thanks. Thanks so very much. We've been friends for so many years, and you know I've been a fan through all those years. Uh, well, it's good to talk to you. Now, I, I know that, that you tweeted out a reaction to or, or a response to kind of what uh, was happening on this right. Russia front uh, over the last day or right, so. Sure. Tell, tell me, tell me, should should Americans be concerned that the Republican nominee is inviting a foreign government to hack into government emails? Is that what Trump was getting at? Well, it's absolutely not what he said. It's the way it's been characterized by his political opponents and and a lot of the you know a lot of the people sitting on the panels uh, in Philadelphia um on cable TV i mean what what he said what i said was uh was clearly if if russia or, or any foreign country uh what inter, was interfering or intervening or engaging in illegal activity in the united states our elections or otherwise or there'd be serious consequences but he he went on using uh, a statement laced with sarcasm uh, to point out the fact that there are 33,000 missing emails, uh, according to the FBI, that Hillary Clinton, you know, deleted or did not make available in the course of that investigation. And now what's ironic is that 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 many of those that are attacking Donald Trump uh, are are suggesting that those 33,000 emails have apparently have national security information in them, although Hillary Clinton, I, I guess, has already said that 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 was all about just personal communications and wedding plans. And so, you know, come on. I mean, the, the real issue here is this is all about distraction, Laura. This is all about changing the focus and the attention. That's also what I said yesterday from the fact that uh, the release of these emails through WikiLeaks has shown a Democratic National Party that rigged the system against Bernie Sanders uh, that worked and, and colluded in such a way. Uh, I guess it came out yesterday that even before the Democratic nomination was settled, Hillary Clinton was already connecting and working directly with the Democratic National Committee. And, I, you know, I understand. Yeah, I, I served with Bernie Sanders, you know, for six years in the House of Representatives back when you and I first met. He's the nicest socialist I ever served with. Um, but I, I can understand why his supporters are, are frustrated and angry, and you continue to hear from them because because these emails are confirming what was but that this was a rigged system. And what's remarkable to me is once again the national media takes what was clearly a sarcastic comment made by Donald Trump uh, after after he and and I sense have condemned any potential activity by Russia or any other foreign power. They've taken a sarcastic comment suggested that he was encouraging uh, that activity, all the while ignoring uh, the extraordinary revelations uh, in these emails well, yeah, of I mean, collusion, can, yeah. uh, well, of, of horrible statements regarding race or ethnicity well, or religion. Have it both ways, and that's Governor. what the American people know about. Yeah, they can't have it both ways. They can't say that <sighs> it doesn't matter right. to them at all that Hillary Clinton right. did this and laid bare her emails. As Comey pointed out, we'll never know probably never know who actually hacked into her system because they, they were not even as secure as Google or, or Gmail, for God's sake. And so now right. they're trying to say, oh, right. this is outrageous that Trump would do that. Not a single Democrat withdrew their support, not a single Democrat, after we learned about what she did for her own convenience because she wanted conveniently yeah. to keep the information from Congress or from FOIA requests. She knew what she was doing, and now they're outraged. Excuse me if I don't believe that. I want to get into another point, um, which is uh, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, Governor Pence. Last night, uh, yeah. Barack, Barack Obama, that is his number one legislative priority. He has said as much, his number one priority. He did not right. mention it one time, and if he did, he would have been booed by that stadium, by that by that arena, you in the past have been for the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Clearly, the Republican sure. base has turned against these big hulking, you know, big massive trade deals. Can we be convinced that given the fact that you're on this ticket with with uh, Trump, that Donald Trump is definitively against this Trans-Pacific Partnership? And will you help him uh, 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 stick, stay true to that promise? 
Well, I, I believe you can be convinced. Look, Donald Trump has been uh, in the position he's been on on these uh, multinational trade deals for many years. And you're absolutely right. I, I think throughout my career, Laura, I've I've strongly supported free trade and measures that it came before the Congress. And, and when I was asked to support free trade initiatives as governor of Indiana, I, I supported them. But frankly, you know, we're on the we're on the verge of electing one of the best negotiators in the world as president of the United States of America. And as Donald and I sat down and talked uh, early on, you know, he, he talked to me about questioning the wisdom of these of these uh, you know multi-country trade agreements that uh, that then you know when they're not working out the way clearly NAFTA is not any longer it's very difficult to unwind he said to me look let's do, he's he's for free trade I'm for free trade but let's do deals on a country by country basis let's work out deals that work for uh, the people of the United States the consumers of the United States and businesses here and I'm 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 completely uh, convinced that there is wisdom in that. Let's let's deal with countries individually. You know, let's not uh, with the TPP. It feels a little bit like Obamacare. No, please. You remember when Nancy Pelosi said we got to pass this bill yeah. so we can find out what's in it? Uh, it the TPP. You know, I, I, as I said, I've I've always supported free trade. Donald Trump supports free trade. But for heaven's sakes, when you look at things like like carrier pulling up stakes, taking 1,400 jobs out of the state of Indiana, which is, I think, the the best state for manufacturing in the country in a lot of different ways, they're going to Mexico. I I think that tells you it's time to rethink NAFTA, renegotiate NAFTA to make sure it's working for the people of the United States. And on TPP, let's hit the brakes and let's 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 deal with these Asian in Pacific Rim countries on an individual basis in a way that will promote growth. Yeah, the the even the Korean free trade deal, which, again, was touted by uh, Bush and the Republicans, even the Korean free trade deal has turned out uh, uh, in the opposite direction of what they predicted, that our trade deficit would go down. Our trade deficit has grown every year since we try, tried uh, and signed the Korean free trade deal. Uh, so can we trust Hillary yeah. and the Democrats on the TPP? Because they, uh, Hillary claims she's against the TPP. I predicted that if she becomes president of the United States, the Bernie voters should know she'll that'll pass in the lame duck session, or it'll pass in the first six months of her presidency. Well, I, I, I think uh, I think Terry McCall, of the governor of Virginia, said as much. I know he's he's re, you know he's uh, clarified his statement since. But look, this is. The thing that appeals to people about Donald Trump, the reason why I'm so incredibly honored to have the opportunity to run and serve uh, with him as vice president of the United States, is because the man speaks his mind, okay? Uh, His style is different than mine, uh, clearly, but the man speaks his mind. You don't have to wonder where Donald Trump is on an issue. And on this issue, on putting American jobs first, on, on having... Uh, having a you know uh, uh, taken a harder line on negotiating trade deals, that's not a new position for him. That's where he's been all along, and I guarantee you, a Trump administration is going to roll our sleeves up. Uh, we're going to look at these deals, and we're going to make sure they work for the American people. I, I just have to tell you, I mean, you know, there's a provision in NAFTA, and it's been around for 20 years now. There's a provision in NAFTA that that says that it was to be reviewed oh, on was. a regular basis Obama and reconsidered. We've it. never done that. Yeah, Obama We've promised never to done review. that. Uh, Governor, I want to move and I'm on. Gonna tell you, yeah. the, you know, Go can I tell you one other yeah. thing about that? Yeah. Though? The, the carrier thing in Indiana was it was a jarring experience for me because we got a growing economy in Indiana in spite of the Obama policies and the Obama economy. Um, but when Carrier pulled up stakes, I sat their CEOs down. I said, what are you leaving Indiana for Mexico for? And they said two things. They said, number one, basically, my words, not theirs. It was an avalanche of regulations that they just could no longer abide. Uh, literally one new regulation about every two weeks the last year. Second thing they said is all our competitors are already in Mexico. And, and I was oh, I was stunned by that. Yeah, they said all all the people we compete with are already manufacturing in Mexico, Governor, and we're just going to go there. Yeah. That tells me something's fundamentally wrong. We got to change it. Governor, um, uh, are are you planning to compete nationwide? I heard early on, like uh, early on, like four weeks ago, that y'all were going to focus on about fifteen to seventeen states, something like that, thirteen to seventeen states. 
Uh, but but a nationwide campaign is what Reagan ran in 1980 for American renewal, for uh, you know, for a strong right. economy, strong foreign policy, pragmatism, patriotism for the average worker. Uh, so that's my first question. Second question is, what are you, what's your pitch going to be to voters in states like Michigan, Wisconsin, and Minnesota, those states that are on the that you know are traditionally have yeah, been tough for Republicans to win? Well, I think it's all. I think this election is all about security and prosperity. Uh, it's all about uh, having a stronger America abroad uh, and, a, and and reasserting law and order at home. But it's also about putting into motion the kind of tax relief, regulatory reform, repealing Obamacare, tougher, stronger trade deals, enforcing our laws, securing our borders. That's going to give the American people uh, the confidence to. Uh, to, to have a growing economy again. I mean, I think that's a message, to your point, that's going to resonate in the four corners of this country, and you bet we're going to campaign everywhere. I mean, there's going to be, you know, you've been at this a while, there are key battleground states, right? And there's going to be a real focus. I'm, I'm in Michigan today. I was in Wisconsin last night, we're Pennsylvania, we're in Florida yesterday. We're hitting it hard. We're going to continue to hit it hard in those battleground states. But uh, I, I promise you, uh, uh, this team, this ticket, this campaign is going to take our message all across the country. And, and I truly do believe, you saw a national poll yesterday, uh, that that is, I think, evidence of the fact the, the American people are hearing that, that plain-spoken, bold leadership of Donald Trump for a stronger America at home and abroad, and it, it's resonating everywhere. And uh, we have about 30 seconds here, but uh, the the left yeah. and some of the never Trumpers are saying that Donald Trump is set to abandon our NATO allies. Very quickly, response. Uh, just not a chance. Look, this is a again. This is this is one of the toughest negotiators in the world. He's basically saying, "Here's the deal: we're going to meet our obligations to our treaty allies. We're going to rebuild our military and be strong." All right. But in the same breath, we are going to require when we meet our treaty obligations, we're going to require that our partners meet their treaty obligations. Yeah, heaven forbid. <laughs> uh, that's a that's a fresh thought. It's a positive thought. It's a welcome thought for the American people. Well, Governor Pence, I hope I see you out there on the campaign trail. Really appreciate the time you've given us. I think you've 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 had an unbelievable impact already on this race. Thank you so much. We'll check back with you soon. You're listening to the Laura Ingram Show.